This video will discuss Kepler's second law, Kepler's second law. And Kepler found out that if we, uh, our first law was that the planets move on ellipses with the sun at one focus. Then if we would take an imaginary line from the planet to the sun, and at some later time from the planet to the sun, the area of this uh, portion of the ellipse that was kind of swept out by this moving line, imaginary line, that's going to be, that area is going to be the same as long as we use the same time interval. So if this is one month between this dot and this dot, and one month between this dot and this dot, the area that I've shaded here will be equal to the area back here. So that's Kepler's second law. And you can obviously see that uh, from the path here that the speed of the planet is greater when it's close to the sun. At aphelion, uh, perihelion, the planet has its greatest speed. At aphelion, the planet's going to be moving at its slowest speed. So that's our, and these shadings may not be quite uh, perfect here, but it, equal areas and equal times is our Kepler's second law. Um, there's a physics reason for this, and you can <coughs> listen to as much as this as you want. Um, but I'm, and I'm going to have a numerical example on the next page. But uh, this uh, fact that the planet speeds up near the sun is a consequence of the physics principle, conservation of angular momentum. Angular momentum is calculated with I times W, or sorry, omega, I times omega, where I is moment of inertia, omega is the angular velocity. And just to explain this a little bit more, for a small object, the moment of inertia is calculated with mass of the object times the distance to our axis squared, in this case to the sun squared. The angular velocity is equal to the linear velocity divided by r. Omega equals v over r. These are all physics principles that you could ask your instructor or look up in a textbook. Um, so if we have I omega, I is replaced with mr squared, omega replaced with V divided by R, and the one factor of R cancels, so the angular momentum can be expressed as mrv or more commonly mvr. And what we'll have here is conservation of angular momentum, the mass of the planet times the velocity at aphelion times the radius at aphelion will equal the mass of the planet, the velocity at perihelion times the radius at perihelion. We're moving very slowly, so we don't have to use uh, special relativity and talk about changing mass of uh, the object based on speed. So we're going to cancel that mass off of both sides. And then I can set up a proportion if I solve for radius aphelion divide by radius of perihelion, it's equal to velocity at perihelion divided by velocity at aphelion. So let's uh, do this calculation uh, given for the Earth, uh, for the Earth, that uh, we have a velocity at aphelion. That's in July. The velocity of the Earth at aphelion is 29,000. 300 meters per second, 29.3 kilometers per second. And given the fact that the aphelion distance, we're at 152.1 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. And at perihelion, our distance to the sun, we're closer, perilous, perihelion, 147.1 times 10 to the 6. So we have enough information here to calculate our speed at uh, perihelion. So we're going to put in 29.3 kilometers per second for aphelion. We're putting in uh, 152.1 times 10 to the 6, divide by 147.1 times 10 to the 6, and we can calculate our speed at uh, perihelion. So I'm going to just do that here, and I'm going to use a few abbreviations. So velocity at perihelion, and then we have, I'm going to uh, solve for the perihelion velocity. It would be 29.3 kilometers per second. I'm shifting units away from meters per second, just easier to write. That's our velocity at aphelion. 
<coughs> excuse me, times the radius at aphelion divided by their distance at perihelion. Kilometers cancel, the 10 to the 6 cancel. You should calculate this on your own calculator. I came up with 30.3 kilometers per second. <clears throat> the speed of the Earth at uh, perihelion. Planets move faster when they're at perihelion near the Sun. They move slower when they're far from the Sun. Kepler's second law um, giving us that information. Ask your instructor if you have questions.